Hello and welcome back. Today I wanted to give a short demonstration of the logic chips that we will be using in the Pony 80. The AND, the NAND, the OR, and the NOR. I wanted to be sure that newcomers to electronics fully understand what we're doing from start to finish, and these logic gates will be used extensively in the Pony 80. Now if you remember in my clock video, I built a clock using an inverter chip. Well what I have here is a transistor a 2N3904 set up as an inverter. I've hooked a resistor, let me move this out of the way. I've hooked a resistor from five volts to the collector and then connected the emitter directly to ground. The base is connected to the jumper through this resistor and right now the jumper is connected to ground. I connected the LED to the collector and then to ground. So what's happening here is that the transistor is in the off position. So there's no current running from the collector to the emitter. This allows current to flow from the collector through the LED to ground. However, if I turn on the resistor by connecting the base to five volts, the current will flow through the resistor, through the transistor, from the collector to the emitter and to the ground, eliminating the current from the LED and turning it off. So what I've done here is to create a single inverter. And if you only need one inverter in a circuit, this is one way to accomplish that. Now over here, I have an HCT08 AND gate. An AND gate does exactly what it sounds like logically. If pin 1 and pin 2 are high, then the output is high. Otherwise, the output is low. So, if I take pin 1 here and make it high, nothing happens. If I move that back to low and move pin 2 to high, nothing happens. But, if I move them both to high, then the output turns high. Now right next to this, we have an HCT00 NAND gate. Now a NAND gate may sound confusing, but all it is is an AND gate with an inverter on the output. So let's take a look at the AND gate again. The only time the output is high is if both inputs are high. Any other configuration and the output is low. Well with the NAND gate, the only time the output is low is if both inputs are high. Otherwise the output's going to be high. As you can see here, it is exactly the opposite of what the AND gate is doing. The NAND gate will be critical in our Pony 80, as a lot of the pins on the CPU and memory are active low. So for example, to enable a RAM chip, we might be looking for address pins 14 and 15 to be in the high state, but the RAM chip enable is active low. The NAND gate gives us exactly what we need for this scenario without having to use both an AND chip and an inverter chip. I would like to take a moment to encourage you to like this video and to subscribe to the Pony 80 channel. This will help the channel grow. Also check out my Patreon and my website. The links are in the description below. The other interesting thing about a NAND gate is that it can be used as an inverter if needed. If you tie the two inputs together, and the input pins will either be both high or both low. As you saw earlier, if both inputs are high, the output goes low, and if they're both low, the output goes high. So many times, rather than include a NAND gate and an inverter chip, you can consolidate down to just a NAND chip and use any inputs that aren't needed otherwise. Over here, we have the HCT32 OR gate. Just like it sounds, the output goes high if either or both of the inputs is high. So if I make that high, make it low, so either or. And then finally, we have the NOR gate, the HCT02. A NOR gate is an OR gate with an inverter on the output. So the output only goes high when both inputs are low. If either or both of the inputs goes high, the output goes low. So 
So thank you for watching, for liking, and subscribing. I will continue this series of videos if there's enough interest. If you have a question or want to see a specific subject covered on a future video, please leave a comment below. Have a great day.